So today we are interviewing the CEO and founder of Innovators Box, Ms. Monica Kang. It's a pleasure to be interviewing you today. My name is Therese Shasti. I'm a sophomore of Homedale High School. I'm the founder of Company Roots and my passions include entrepreneurship, tennis, and eating exotic foods. Um, this is my partner, Rahul Kavuru. So my name is Rahul Kavuru. I'm an eighth grader at Oak Hill Academy. I'm the vice president of Company Roots and my passions include entrepreneurship, tennis, watching Shark Tank, and playing chess. So before we start the interview, we just want to thank you for taking your time. And we think what Innovators Box is, what is doing is just amazing. So yeah. thank you. Um, so just to start off, what were your company roots and how do they help you uh, create Innovators Box? Sure. So for me, um, and I must double check when you say company roots, are you asking what are kind of the core values? Yeah. And the importance um, for me, the core thing that was critical was um, access, access, equal access, and really making making the empowerment easy. Mm -hmm. And I say those as the two foundations because I realize even though creativity innovation is something we talk a lot and quite a bit, yeah. um, there are certain groups that tend to access more information more opportunities and hence tend to build that stereotype of, oh, maybe I'm not creative, you know, maybe innovation is only for certain people and maybe it's not for me. And along the way, as a result, recognizing that maybe I, I can't do something and losing that sense of opportunity. And so I realized maybe I, if, if I can help people understand how everyone is creative and through those axes, making it more uh, equalized and affordable for everyone and understandable so that they don't feel that they have to be in one place. Mm -hmm. It's part of the core roots that was based on uh, why I wanted to build Innovators Box and how the company was built. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so who would you say like your biggest influence was that led you to create Innovators Box? I would say for me, uh, my family mm -hmm. uh, has been a big inspiration. And I know you probably get the answer <laughs> quite a bit, but I think uh, family is critical. Uh, my parents have always pushed me to, you know, think about what are the things that you would probably regret more by not doing it. And I realized that when I understand the power of creative mindset, I thought of, and I came to that question of like, well, how can I help more people? That next question of like, I think if I can't figure out how to help more people without trying it would upset me more than just thinking that I can't do it. Yeah. And so having that uh, support, having, I think, uh, family as a mentor to really help me guide there has been a strong uh, inspiration as well as someone who I can look back and say that there's someone out there pushed me to take risks and understand that it was possible. Yeah. Um, well, talking about opportunities and like opportunity cost and everything, uh, what do you think your most difficult decision as an entrepreneur was? And what did you give up in order to get to where you are today? Lots of uh, <laughs> decision making. Uh, I think it's a lie when someone says that it's only one thing that they feel like they have to sacrifice. I feel like at times we want to need to sacrifice a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But the beauty is almost um, so a good example is, you know, when you see a butterfly, it feels like right before it transforms into a butterfly, it looks like it's about to die. Yeah. Um, so but we know that it's just a transformation process they're going through before it becomes a butterfly. Mm -hmm. the Killer becomes a butterfly and I think that's almost a constant flow of process that an entrepreneur goes through like at the moment that you feel like you're, you've done something you've sacrificed it's actually just a form of transformation that you're going through so in one example is I felt like I had to sacrifice a career which um, sure you might have noticed I used to work in the government and international affairs and nuclear weapons and for yeah. those who might look at that <laughs> as a track if you've been building your entire life and then suddenly feeling you were switching um, on paper to creative education, it feel it could feel like a sacrifice, but it's essentially more form of a transformation. And I think the scariest thing is remembering that I know that it is a transformation and not letting other people get and sway the way that, oh, you must have given up. It must feel sad. Not letting those voices get in the way and remembering that as long as you remember what that transformation and journey was meant, um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a positive transition, not something that you say that you completely lost sight of. And I still believe that I'll channel this all back to that yeah. industry, other industries. So it's not that I completely let go, but I think not being swayed by those different perspectives is a critical aspect. And so that's how I would answer. Yeah. 
So in terms of that, like, transformation process, like, when you were a teenager, would you, like, see yourself, like, um, becoming or transforming into an entrepreneur? And if so, like, what um, steps did you take to achieve that goal? So that's a great point because actually when I was a teenager, I didn't think of becoming an entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I, you know, I envy the generation that you guys are at now because I think there's just so much more visibility. Yeah, uh, technology has made uh, information more accessible. The fact that we can have this conversation. <laughs> I think back when I was an, um, a teenager, those were things that wasn't really commonplace or yeah. even the thought of someone you know, my age would build a business was just unthinkable. Mm -hmm. And I also grew up part of my time in Korea, which had also a conservative education system as well as in America, yeah. which also had, you know, well, not conservative as much as Korea, but, you know, still very hierarchical, you know, you mm -hmm. got to finish uh, uh, all these requirements in high school. So you get into a good college because good college means you get into all these other places. Yeah. And so while I had a clear vision that I wanted to get into international affairs and diplomacy, I think entrepreneurship at that time, at least wasn't something that I uh, was aware of. And yeah. I learned more about it later on. And hopefully the encouragement is that you don't have to feel like you need to think about entrepreneurship early on to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, learning all the skills and building that mindset of curiosity, creativity, asking the questions. Those are actually all critical skills that, that helps you become an entrepreneur, not necessarily being in an entrepreneur class and just yeah. learning about entrepreneurship. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I didn't really think about it back then, but I now look back and all the skills I acquired has helped me who I am now. And I mean, um, our writer, Emily Pinlack, she um, she wants to be a diplomat. And the reason she's doing it is, is this... Um, she wants to find out if she actually wants to be a diplomat or if she wants to go to another field. So it's really interesting for her to do this type of thing as well. So the knowing that you you were a diplomat and then you kind of switched to this career and you're like succeeding <laughs> so much is kind of like a booster for her. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. And I would also encourage her to notice that I think one thing that's been really um, exciting in my journey is that, yes, I might not have like the diplomat title, on my job description, but the mm -hmm. work I'm doing is essentially diplomacy. Yeah. I'm helping bridging, building bridges across different communities, different industries, different individuals, and helping them better understand that's a form of diplomacy. It's just that not to country A to country B. <laughs> and so by the time that she probably gets into that transition and even probably earlier, the concept of diplomacy will probably radically change and so I hope that she finds newer ways to channel that diplomacy interest yeah um, because it shouldn't be just in traditional uh, what you see in the State Department and that's just one of the many ways you can practice it yeah yeah so I saw like that you had several like you want you got like several awards and achievements so what would you say like was like the best like number one factor that led you to achieve these recognitions Thank you. Uh, I would say patience and persistence. <laughs> and we had, a, we had to take a lot of patience to scroll through all the awards. <laughs> because um, I think patience and persistence, especially because a lot of the awards that, especially the first couple, um, really drove based on community. Mm -hmm. And as you know from uh, some of your uh, leadership work that you know, top building community requires a lot of patience and work because yeah. you just can't tell one person like, hey, John, can you just come to my event that like I'm putting together because you're a friend of mine and like, hey, Jane, like I know you're a friend of mine. So, like, that yeah. just doesn't like maybe one time you can convince John and Jane and they'll be excited to come, but you can't have them like support you in a longer way. And if yeah. you're asking something like that, you got to be able to provide that value. So that's a constant give and take in that relationship building. Um, and I, you know, of course, you know, for those particular, there were particular ones that I had to ask people, like, can you help vote? Can you like help spread the word? But there were a lot of other ones that I got because people genuinely just supported us and looked out for us. Yeah. And that would not have been possible if I first really cared about wanting to provide that gift and help others. Yeah. So in other words, if I was just simply after the awards, it wouldn't be the same result. Yeah. Um, think, you know, titles are great, but, you know, what's the whole reason why you're doing what you're doing and where is that leading to? And it just happened to be that some of them meant that you get to be recognized by the yeah. public that they're excited about what you do. <laughs> it happened to be in the form of awards. And I think that's the most beautiful form of recognition, not because you fought to get that award just for the sake of the award. Right. 
And um, I know Innovators Box is located in DC, and you're very proud about that fact. You're very deeply rooted in that community. So, how do you expand to how do you, how do you plan to expand in the future with this community like by your side? And where do you see yourself and Innovators Box in ten years? Wonderful. Um, so in 10 years, we hope to have a strong global presence mm -hmm. um, beyond just uh, United States, yeah. uh, be able to have in different languages, uh, different communities, and really making that, uh, you know, without borders. Uh, mm -hmm. To make it possible, uh, we are looking in through different, you know, pipelines, different kind of community uh, ways, but also different uh, product lines. Yeah. Uh, we currently have Spark, which is one of our products, uh, mm -hmm. but we have other products in the way that we're making and helping figure out how can we make creative mm -hmm. learning more uh, accessible and understandable across different age groups. Uh, someone, you know, who is even younger than, you know, high school learn about creativity as well as someone who is grandmother, grandfather age to learn about creativity. How can I help all of those people in different ways? Those are all different communities. Yeah. And so our scale approach is, you know, tackling those through different products and community development uh, in different cities. And so the hope is that by 10 years, hopefully we'll have a pretty strong presence around the world and well, continue to grow. I mean, based on the thing about expanding your presence, what do you mm -hmm. think that we could do to help you like spread yeah. creativity through like elementary, middle school, high school? Like in, Ooh, even that's a good question. I would love to know where, as students, you feel that you are discouraged from being creative, mm -hmm. as well as opportunities where you think that um, products like Spark can come in and help um, and have opportunities for not maybe just teachers, but also among students to right. have the opportunity, maybe through student clubs, like, hey, do we have a budget so that we can buy some of these games so that we can use for ourselves yeah. because I think when the more um, interest comes directly from the students, it's not just empowering to see the results, but it's even more so because the students proactively took the step to want to invest in themselves. Yeah. And that probably will channel to um, teachers and hopefully to academia to help understand, well, maybe we got to figure out how to put in more creativity if we're not doing a good job, because especially by the time you guys finish high school and when you get to college, like things will change a lot faster. Yeah. So especially those who are in school, like they have to be a lot more prepared. And I think being a student right now is such a great opportunity because you have the access yeah. and opportunity uh, to uh, connect those things. And so, yes, if you have insights on those, I would love to hear them. <laughs> I mean, right now I feel like we're, our society isn't as much based on like crunching numbers and being good at math and stuff. It's based on, can you find a way around this and go to something else? That's why computer science is becoming such a huge thing. Um, what like on on the feedback for Spark in school? I think it would be an amazing idea. Like I have this club called Future Business Leaders of America that I'm in, and mm -hmm. we're always trying to find like ideas to like another thing to do, how to raise money, how to go to like last year we went to Microsoft and we just kind of toured the building there in New York. Oh. So I think having something like Spark to like induce creativity and maximize it is a really mm -hmm. good idea. And I'll I'll look um I'll contact you later on how I can maybe get this in my own school. So I think it would be a really good presence for what we have in my school right now. And that would be school. awesome. Thanks for asking that. And yeah. I would say, you know, the fact that you guys are doing this in the first place, you know, is really encouraging to see because, you know, the more um, I hope that, you know, there's information is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. Action is what matters. Yeah. Definitely. So the fact that you guys, you know, when you first mentioned about you were interested in learning more, but then wanted to hence as a result have the opportunity to interview and like create it into an opportunity to share that information i hope that you know that inspires other maybe some of your friends as well yeah. to understand that, you know maybe just learning sports is one way but maybe there's another opportunity to use that learning opportunity for something else mm -hmm. um, so really excited to see what yeah the generation that you guys are able to continue to create for everyone else as well so keep it up thank, thank you. you um so as you said before you released a product called spark so mm -hmm. how do you think entrepreneurs should utilize, utilize this product for maximum creativity? Wonderful. Um, a lot of different ways. Um, and I'll highlight a few. So one, the, the beauty about Spark is that um, it's a deck of question cards, uh, creativity question cards uh, yeah. that has questions on curiosity, reflection, and creativity. But the fun, most important part is that um, that I was excited to even discover is that because of the way we curated the product, by the time the user 
receives it, they can think of many more ways than just one or two thoughts that I had mm -hmm. to use the product. Yeah. And that will be actually the number one reason why it's really hard for entrepreneurs because essentially as entrepreneurs, when you are faced, let's say this is a problem, like I need to figure out how to figure out this problem, the, as an entrepreneur, you not only have to first admit that this is a problem, second, acknowledge what your resources are, but third, as a result, yes, let's say that's yeah, a problem. You had a third, perfect. About, you know, how are ways that you can tackle that, but how are ways that you can tackle that with little time, mm -hmm. with more time, with little budget, with more budget, like all these different criterias lead you to different directions. Yeah. And sometimes trying to figure that out by yourself and without any prompts can be a bit challenging. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that there is a deck that can help you be inspired to remember that message first, mm -hmm. and two, to know that you don't have to always just feel like you have to put your burden by yourself, like having support prompts like that is a great way to make it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And when you lessen the process, it becomes easier to do the execution and thinking and make it more ingrained. And so especially for entrepreneurs where they constantly have to be a creative problem solver, as well as everyone else, it, it becomes quite uh, critical and empowering for them. Yeah. Um, so you said uh, you love to be curious, but how would you say curiosity um, made you create this deck and how do you say that it helped you become successful and get you in the best mindset that you could possibly be? Great question. Um, I would say curiosity is a key component to a core part of learning how to be creative mm -hmm. because <laughs> If I was not curious about what are 10 different ways I can use this paper clip um, or little clip, right? Or I guess, you know, this, this clip. Uh, and I choose to just see this as just a clip. then that's all what I see. Yeah. But if I choose to be curious and I ask myself, I wonder why, well, I wonder what this would feel like if this was like a bird. Well, I guess this could be the wing. <laughs> that would be like a nice little like fidget. But maybe this could be in different colors. Oh, I wonder if I can put it in different colors, if I can sell it at a higher price. Yeah. And if I sell it at a higher price, maybe I can even do like a whole like art marketing campaign around it. Or maybe yeah. it could have like a little message where it's like all these thoughts in the first place and ideas and hence opportunities of what you can choose from and decide won't happen unless I first ask those questions. And I realized even for me, the product of Spark came about because I noticed that when I bring people together, I was tired of people asking uh, the same comments, which is, oh, how are you doing? What's your name? What school are you from? What work? What organization are you from? Oh, how's the traffic? How's the weather? How's your family? Right? Like, unfortunately, yeah. you're laughing because even for you, you probably heard this conversation a number of times. Yeah. Unfortunately, as you grow older, you keep hearing those conversations. <laughs> it's about time we, like, stop it. So I, I got, you know, instead of channeling that as frustration, I got wondering about, you know, I wonder how we can change that. And so I started having these question prompts during my events. Yeah. Um, but everyone keep taking them and said like, oh, Monica, can I take one or two? Like, these are really nice. Like, can I use them for my like team building? Yeah. And that's when I realized I wonder how I can help more people use this without necessarily just like having it on a printed paper. And mm -hmm. so that's how the vision of Spark came about of like, how can I make it more systematically and help more people easily? Yeah. Um, and so questions like that, the, you know, really willingness to ask something because you really want to understand and being genuinely interested and curious leads to an opportunity of learning more and hence creativity and everything else. And so that's why I emphasize on curiosity. Yeah. And I would say even for my company itself, if I wasn't curious about how I can be unstuck in a job I love, I would not have one to build what I have right now or let alone understand. And so curiosity is, is critical. Um, yeah. And in fact, science says that in the learning process, when you are curious, you have stronger. Uh, well, I mean, you want to remember it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you remember it better. You tend to actually understand it better because you actually had that aha moment. Yeah, and I mean, that's like the best way to learn for anybody. I think it's like um, when you see this, what do you think about? Ooh, see now I'm curious because I have no idea what that is. <laughs> yeah, but then when you press when you press this, uh -huh. you get an alligator in it. Oh, I used like, to play stuff like those. Yeah. It's just like a little souvenir that my dad got me a long ago. But like when uh -huh. you talked about like 
curiosity as a perception. I really got the idea of like, well, when you see this, you just see an egg, but when you spin it, you see what's really inside of it. And like, yes. it's kind of like a metaphor, what uh, just for something else that curiosity can be in. And mm-hmm. I think that the best thing is that curiosity is a service in a way. It's not just a product, as in Spark. So you're you're taking this service and you're making it a product in Spark, and you're taking a service-based company and you're really expanding your margins, which I find really inspiring. Thank you. So on the topic of curiosity, you said um, that your mission was to empower people with curiosity. So, like, when did you have that goal in life, and how exactly did that lead you to create Innovators Box? You know, it's funny because I think in hindsight, I I always, you know, if we just had a one-on-one conversation and this wasn't like an interview, I am just genuinely really curious about people Mm -hmm. uh, and curious about everything I I did. So, in my career, I was always curious about, you know, I wonder what, what this career means, like, what are the type of people involved, what does it mean when I do this? Uh, when I met people at events, um, I was always curious about where people got to where they are. And so I think that genuine curiosity was an aspect that I've always had. And it just happened to help me understand because of that, I got to ask certain questions that led me to help build the business where it is today. Yeah. But along the journey also recognized that somewhere, unfortunately, due to the education system, um, which you probably have noticed <laughs> in <laughs> workforce, we are forced to drop our curiosity because sorry, we told you that you're supposed to only solve one to five. We didn't tell you to do the other ones. <laughs> uh, sorry, we told you to only, uh, you know, take care of this task, not like the other task. So people stop being curious because when you're curious, you're shut down. Yeah. Uh, and that, I feel grateful that I stayed curious to get curious about why is it that we are okay with being shut down and let that be status quo. Like, what would it look like if like, you know, let's say all your classmates didn't feel scared to ask a question and just really ask like, teacher, why are we really doing this? And not as a threat, but really more as genuine curious. Like, well, I just really want to understand why is algebra important? Like, yeah. I just really want to know why is chemistry important in my life when I don't want to do anything with science. Why is calculus important? And- yeah, why is calculus important? And, you know, I would, I had to do calculus back when I was in school and, like, you know, I do not use any single aspect, but I would say what helped me now looking back was still the thinking process. Mm-hmm. But I rather wish the teacher at that time explained to me, like, maybe some of you will never use calculus, but remember these teaching thinking process because these things might help. Like, I would then have maybe stayed more curious yeah, and rather than understand how to under, uh, utilize it. And so that's how uh, I would answer it to your question. Yeah, and I think um, that really reflects what we're doing right now. Like the people that you see that go to these Ivy League colleges and that overachieve are the people that take their passion and go a step further to find out more about it and just kind of push themselves a little bit more. And Mm -hmm. um, I mean, on that topic, what would you recommend that the next generation of overachievers or people who chase their passion um, and the next generation of entrepreneurs in general do to Mm -hmm. pursue what they like in high school? Or middle school. Yeah. (laughs) Or middle school, yes, or (laughs) elementary school. I know a lot of other, I think, K-12 individuals who I think probably make a lot more money and is a lot more famous than I am (laughs) because of the generation um, opportunity that you guys have, which I think is really exciting. So I would uh, say my recommendation would be, you know, really find things that you stay curious that will keep your curiosity, number one. Um, because curiosity is the pillar for you to stay engaged and wanting to learn more. You're hungry to learn more, whatever that is, and then wanting to better understand as well as wanting to improve, which where innovation and creativity comes. Yeah. I would also highly recommend staying a constant explorer and explorer or who's someone who's wanting to also understand a lot more of who they are as an individual. Mm-hmm. Every individual is unique with different talents which makes it so beautiful because if everyone truly let out their gifts of what they're good at and focused on that, we might benefit a lot more yeah. from those gifts because a lot of the people are not able to utilize their strengths. Um, so if at times you feel that your gifts are not the right match in the traditional school structure, I would think of ways, how can you still exert and practice it yeah. and stay curious, but also learn through their process. What are the things that I really don't like? 
What are the things I really enjoy? And why is that? I think really spending the time getting to know yourself and strengthening yourself and learning how you can be a better person and being open to different experiences as a result helps you the better who you are, uh, the better version of who you are, Mm -hmm. which along the way will help you find through new opportunities. Um, And I think it's, it's the most exciting thing to recognize that, you know, you always have an unlimited potential to be the next version of you. And when you look back at your ears and say, you know, I think I'm the same person as I was six months ago, then you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Yeah. I would highly encourage thinking about that kind of progress of self-reflection and growth from uh, from that age. Um, and I would say that's a that's part of the core recommendation, regardless of what they think about ambition. And, but especially if you want to make an impact uh, and look for things and stop just comparing because what society says is important. Well, because your best friend says that this is the next best thing. Like if you if, think about things that you really care about, and I'm glad I stuck to some of the ones I did because I wouldn't have traveled or did a lot of the things I've done uh, unless I did that. So we um, want to thank you for giving us this like really inspiring interview. Um, once again, thank you for the interview. Thank you so much. <laughs>